Hello everybody, Dick here again from Chesty Trains in Chestermere, Alberta, Canada. Um, yeah, uh, another couple weeks have passed. Uh, I did some shorts in between. Um, those of you who subscribed and uh, see my, my, my notifications uh, for the videos coming out, uh, you might have noticed the uh, shorts with the two St. Bernard mixes. Those guys, Odie and Odin, are my, uh, my two boys. Um, uh, ODS two and a half year old, uh, uh, St. Bernard, Newfoundland, Great Pyrenees mix, and his brother is as well. He's just a year younger, so he's a year and a half now. And, uh, those two are, uh, um, the guys that keep me busy and, uh, the guys that uh, get me outside, no matter if it's uh, plus 30 or, or minus 40. And, um, they are a lot of fun. They, they play a lot and, uh, yeah, they, uh, you know, there's the odd short that I post uh, too for family to see over in over in Europe. So good, yeah. Maybe uh, one day we can introduce them. I mean, they don't fit into this little room here, especially not both at the same time. But sometimes they peek in the door or or lay in the entrance way and 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 kind of have a snooze there while the trains run. Um, but yeah, not not today. Uh, okay, trains. Trains. We're back to trains, as uh, you guys may have noticed. There's a, a few, a uh, couple of Vectrons that uh, have joined the family. Uh, there's in, in total the three Roco ones, and then there's one, uh, one Trix one. The the Trix one being, uh, you know, a nice model, uh, but more of an economy version. Uh, definitely have to fix uh, the running characteristics. Uh, adjust the. Uh, the braking and the acceleration a bit as well as the uh, uh, low speed uh, range because it's it really like takes off like a bat out of hell uh, when you when you start it so the the first few speed steps definitely have to be adjusted as well as the braking like when you stop it it, it doesn't run out it literally stops like on a dime uh, the Roku on the other hand um, super nice models uh you know a lot of people complain that you have to put all these little add-on parts on yourself um the detail parts like the windshield wipers the little handrails uh you know the whole uh front buffer array like uh, the brake lines and, and air lines and um you know stuff for the uh, uh braking mechanism underneath and the boogies and stuff but in the end like you know it takes about it took about half an hour to 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 do the first one now uh, which i'm going to show you but uh it wasn't that bad it really wasn't that bad and and uh you know it was a magnifying glass for my eyes i i, I definitely need one with good light but uh but also it's black on black like uh it was the uh i am the backbone a Vectron from DB Cargo that I uh, put the add-on parts on and everything is black and the add-on parts are black so it gets kind of a little iffy there and, and uh, hard to see if you don't have good light or, or good eyesight or uh, you know if you don't use a magnifying glass anyways that's uh, you know we're gonna have a look at that uh, and uh, you know I, I don't know what else uh, um, I'm probably gonna include the, in the video tomorrow I'm gonna go to Hans's place again you know uh, run some trains over there with him and uh, maybe bring some of mine and let them cruise around and uh, one idea was maybe the the 14 part IC one with the two engines and, and sound uh, in, in both to uh, see how it performs on on his layout I think it'd probably be looking pretty good on there. Um, or something like maybe maybe like an ore train with, with 40 cars and, and, and double traction, double locomotives. Um, not 100% sure yet. Uh, you know, that's going to be some sort of short, short made decision. Um, what else can I, can I show off? Uh, not sure probably just let some trains run and uh, but I, I want to show you guys the uh, a couple of functions on the uh, Vectron and, and the sound functions again I don't understand where if there's 28 uh, sound slots that you can use in, in function slots or 32 or whatever it is now or 34 use them 
like don't just put one station announcement on there put like five on there if you have four slots that you don't know what to do with put station announcements on put uh you know radio announcements like for for uh, uh shunting or something or you know instead of noises like windshield wiper or uh you know no locomotive you're not going to hear the windshield wiper not even if you're sitting inside as a driver and and you know and you're driving along the track you're not going to hear the windshield wiper but you know it's it's yeah it's things that they put on there um i think it would be way better served to have you know uh, uh have noises like like or, or have like station announcements and stuff what i do like is is kind of you can have it in the station and uh and you can press a button and then it makes a sound of a train passing by it's kind of different um it's kind of cool when you have analog or, or trains without um sound that could drive by you could press a button um other than that i mean because essentially like anything you kind of add now is is kind of sound at least on uh, on uh, for myself like like i'm i'm really trying to uh you know have have the locomotives with the sound and uh you know if they don't come with the sound then to upgrade them to sound and uh, so so in that respect it, it might be obsolete eventually but uh, you know on the other hand it's in there again it's a function and and they made some use of it and um it's kind of different right so so uh yeah I'll, I'll i'll take it you know any sound function is is good as as long as it kind of makes sense you know like the door closing at the end of the day okay i can see the windshield wiper hmm, not so much you know shoveling coal in the steam engine i don't think when the steam engine runs you can really hear him shovel coal you know when he's in the yard and they they starting up the steam engine you can probably hear him shovel coal um you know kind of like that so yeah it's uh it's it's it is what it is like like we'll just gotta take whatever the the model train manufacturers give us right um i've seen this this uh dining car from from uh from um uh, markland which which um, has the sounds of of you know dishes and uh, uh, being being smashed or washed or whatever and it has kitchen noises or pots and pans and it has people talking at the tables and it, it's i don't know i don't know i much rather have like those freight cars that open the lids or you know if they had a, a, a sliding sidewall van or something that you could digitally open and close and have noise with it i think that will be for me kind of more worth the money let's put it that way than, than having a dining car that that you know makes noises like in a in a dining car because outside the train you'll never hear the noises of a dining car um so but that's i guess that's personal preference and and if people like it and people are willing to spend i don't know 200 euros for for a dining car from markland uh that has a, a sound function decoder in there great right if if they would put like you know a waiter in there that walked up and down on the window different story i'd probably take one of those right if they would make like one of the bar cars from from the old te times um you know and the people were dancing in there you know to the music different story i'd have one of those right because that's kind of cool because you can see it from the outside and and in real life you can see it from the outside too um you know the the table lamps in the uh in the dining car could be individually switched or or based on on uh on uh you know some sort of ran random uh lights coming on lights going off kind of scheme or something you know that would be things that that i would think that makes sense um you know or or uh i don't know there's there's probably a bunch of things you could do that, that nobody has thought of yet and uh, it'd be cool to have like on the other hand like roqua had the coaches with the doors opening and closing and uh you know they were sold out in in no time at all and they never made them again i don't know why they never made them again did they have too many uh of those coaches uh, uh you know not work or jam up or be, become warranty nightmares or you know that they have to take them back from from the from the 
dealers because it didn't work or whatever. I I don't know. I really don't know if I could buy a set of of those. And you know, four six cars with with doors opening and with with the uh, conductor whistle and stuff. I would like it just be kind of cool, you know, coming up to the station and stopping at the platform and all the doors open, you know, it's it's kind of awesome. But I can't until I find some used or, or on eBay or, you know, on one of the uh, other sites where you can buy trains, then I might be able to. But right now I just can't. So I can't have them. It's too bad. But uh, yeah, there's, uh, you know, same like those. Uh, Coil cars like those those steel coil cars with the uh, telescoping hoods, right? Um, if I ever find the set that says Deutsche Bahn on there or Deutsche Bundesbahn, I will buy it, right? Um, just because it's something I I really like to have. So, yeah. Anyways, that's just to that. Um, maybe let's have a look at the uh, at the uh, Roco Vectron. The I'm the backbone of the uh, economy. Um, super nice model. I love it. And uh, then we're actually doing some trains too and not just listening to Dirk talk to himself. So, uh, yeah. Okay, guys. Welcome back. Here we have now the Roco model of the um, Vectron Plus 193 in the I am the backbone of the economy paint scheme from the Deutsche Bahn AG Deutsche Car or DB Cargo um, and they came up with these you know advertising um, locomotives and it really showed too during the times of COVID um, obviously it showed how much uh, how important rail is and I think it's it's a very fitting uh, um, slogan um, as these trains are really bringing all the freight and all the goods all over Germany, all over Europe actually, all over the world they are. Um, anyway, so this locomotive, lots of functions, sound is on already, like random noises come up obviously, um, like every, every locomotive it has horns, um, air compressor noise which is on anyways, um, the coupling noise. It's got a short whistle or short horn, deep short horn. Um, it's got the cab interior lighting. Um, I don't know, is it visible? Uh, yeah, there you can see it. Uh, oh, now I switched lock on, so I'm on it. Um, there it goes off again and comes on so it, it slowly dims in and out uh kind of visible through the side window there um then the uh the high beam com comes on on the locomotive uh again like it switches over real slowly it's kind of done really cool i really like it um how it switches over um it has of course the uh shunting function it has a whistle it has the rail interruptions like a clickety click it's got a mute button and then it's got a whole bunch of light functions where you can uh, have different light configuration you can turn the lights off in the front in the back you can have one light on in the back for for shunting service one light in the front um you can turn yeah like all, all sorts of different configurations i haven't even played with it much um it has like the uh the um, yeah the fault or the error code the uh, where where it uh, slows down the engine and uh, and does that kind of stuff automatically like it, it stops it as if there was an emergency on the rail uh, you heard the cab door. got this this beeping noise and uh, the the brake screening you can activate too with an extra button I'm not quite sure where that is um, now again with this one too 
Um, yeah, so they, there's the uh, automatic braking um, thing. Uh, with this locomotive too, again, like uh, since it's a cargo locomotive, you don't get any station announcements, even though they have still like four sound slots left or, or function slots left that they could have easily put sounds in. Uh, it doesn't have any sort of like, you know, whatever, uh, shunting or, or radio, uh, shunting radio uh, function or something. It's got uh, nothing like that, which I think is pretty sad since, uh, you know, I mean, they're not cheap, like, like really, they look really awesome and they have great detail, like on the front here too, when you look, now that everything is on there, it's kind of hard to see, I need better light, um, but, uh, you know, the printing is super, super good, but I, I, I think they, they could, you know, could easily have some more sounds on there, why not, right, um, if, if the function slots are there, why not have the extra sounds? Anyways, that's the uh, locomotive. Uh, the uh, and we're gonna let it start running ever so slow. So it runs really, 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 really slow. Like this is uh, speed step two, I think. Yep, speed step two, and. Sound is nice and proportional. See there now I have one of those shunting lights on on the back instead of the red lights. Um, yeah, so that's that's that. Nice brake squeal, nice brake squeal. Let's bring it back. Sounds really, really good, I think. And again, you can regulate the, the volume, right, with function buttons, like the auto workers. Another thing, it has a buffer built in, which is very, very little just like like you know but it, it does help like when going over switches and stuff it does keep the sound on so that's kind of cool um so yeah so that was the roco uh class 193 vectron from the db cargo uh the roco model number is Seven one nine. No, that's a locomotion one. That's a different one, uh, which is linear two. Uh, I don't know where the box is. Uh, I'll put it in the comments maybe. Okay, so that's that for yeah, this well, locomotive. Thing, uh, I still had. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for subscribing. Uh, thank you for uh, liking the channel. Uh, where I'm. Chesty Trains is at 980 uh, subscribers right now, so so I'm hoping, of course, this weekend that, uh, you know, may, maybe I can make it to a 1,000. I mean, that would be uh, pretty awesome. I, I, I never expected that. I never even expected to get 500 people, uh, um, you know, liking this, but uh, it kept going, and, and so I keep making videos. Um, let me know in the comments. I mean, the aren't very many comments but uh, occasionally there is comments and and if there's anything you guys want to see anything i should show you guys um let me know in the comments and and i will do that of course because uh you know that's that's what this train channel is all about um the whole uh, move into the basement is still delayed for a bit but eventually that'll happen too uh, latest when I kick all my kids out and they're old enough to, to live on their own. Um, but that will be a few years yet. Uh, the youngest one is just 11, so. Um, yeah, anyways, let's uh, run some more trains.
go. E150 from Roku. No sound. 35 six axle cars. Five shy of the heaviest ore train and or coal train in Germany. Um, just phenomenal. Has to come up the loop and comes over top the same track. So this was, I think about 1.5% incline, maybe 2%. So not super steep, but 35 train cars, six axle. Pretty stunning. Nothing special to the locomotive, just a class E150. I'll uh, put the part number the, the catalog number into the description. So, there you go. Here it comes again. Cruising along. I've reached the peak, it's going to go down the hill, come out the tunnel. It's funny the train engineer can see the last train car now. Before it goes into the tunnel, he goes underneath the bridge here. There you go. Running with the Ecos. There you can see. Very low on the speed still probably speed it up but we don't need to it's gonna come out somewhere in the back there but we can still see it there here it comes up and it has to climb the little hill and now we're once around Let's stop it here again that wasn't too good of a stop not very gradual. Show a little clip okay. of the train station. And there is the track cleaning car with all of Hans's modifications and stickers. Um, you can see there it now has a number on the bottom, SLE 691. Instead of maintenance of way, it says Netz in Standhaltung, like the real train cars say. Um, of course, they're not vacuum cleaners, but. Uh, they are, um, you know, taking care of the track. And then uh, there's a company that manufactures a lot of the equipment, Plaza and Teurer. Uh, they're a German company, I think, that make a lot of the uh, rare maintenance equipment and uh, repair stuff. And then, of course, this vacuum cleaner is together with the uh, Kibri Godwald crane uh, and a couple of, uh, yeah, the boom... Um, rest car and then also an extra um, end car with a nice little dozer on there as well as there is the ESU uh, track voltage uh, metering car uh, it, it reads speed and scale all that kind of stuff just the uh, Messwagen uh, again a track 
uh, metering car coach um, of course no functions just from Roco and then the uh, ESU class 290 in front so a nice little uh, track maintenance train with a purpose like the vacuum cleaner gives it the full purpose and then of course the voltage metering and everything while it's running at the same time and the crane for decoration on the back really really nice That is 210 axles in the train. Just the train cars, 35 train cars. Takes a while to pass by. And now with two locomotives. Why is he flat? Deutschland is fighting flat. It's a tandem diesel electric locomotive. Did you know that? Diesel electric, the V188? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what are you about? Die waren in den 30ern. No, ja, ja, 38 oder 39. Die wurde ja für die Geschütze gebaut. Genau, genau. Für, für die Eisenbahngeschütze zum Ziehen. Ja, das ist der V188. Ja. Sie bauen 10. Irgendwann hat mal einer eine gemacht. Soll ich es gleich mal noch mal? Uh, Lima made it. Ja. Und, I think, Tricks. Da kommt er. ESU 215 and local coaches. That's awesome, eh? Hey? Pack my here, part of it too.